Very excited to talk to our next guest. He's got a big-time fight coming up on October 15th on pay-per-view. He is an Olympic bronze medalist. He was a long-reigning heavyweight champion of the world. It is a pleasure and a thrill to talk to the great Deontay Wilder. Champ, thanks for the time. Oh, uh, man. I appreciate you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Listen, two favorite fights, uh, Deontay, boxing and Miami Heat basketball. And I got a huge thrill Seeing you, uh, you, Kyle Lowry, and Bam Adebayo all getting to meet at the UFC facility. That was like worlds colliding for me, man. How was that experience? It was an amazing experience. You know, I, I had a great uh, time up at the UFC, uh, uh, at the Apex, and, and over where they uh, do all the physios and the recovery and, and, and different things like that. It was an amazing facility. Uh, Dana White has uh, definitely uh, done a great job. With that facility, I mean, they turned something into two million uh, and sold it for four billion. So you know, and that's all for non-record guys, you know, losing record men and whatever, you know, the the bombs of of the world people would call it or whatever. But it ain't about records. Like Dana will always tell you, records is for DJs. It ain't about the name. I enjoy every morning going up that training and um, being able to uh, go across the street right in the in, in, in distance and going to get treated at the same time, you know, going to get my body, my body worked on, uh, replenishing my body with the right source of food uh, to, to, to take the energy from it, replenishing my body with the right source of, of protein to replenish it. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, I always wonder why in the hell we don't have this in boxing, you know, and, uh, but, um, you know, I have nothing but great things to say about the, the USC facility. It's a, it's, a, it's a state-of-the-art facility, and um, I enjoyed it very much so. I'm looking to uh, probably train out there every year. Was uh, was there ever a part of you, or how much of a part of you was there, Deontay? Did you do a little bit of uh, fantasizing about what the power the bronze bomber could do with four-ounce gloves on? Because we already see what oh, you man. can do. We already see what you can do with boxing gloves. I can't even imagine yeah. if you connected with somebody what that would do. <laughs> Jesus, I, it, it used to be certain discussions of it, uh, being in the ring, just being in the atmosphere and being around certain guys. And, and, you know, like I said, being in the atmosphere of this is what they do around here. So, you know, uh, many discussions have been have been had about that and uh, different things like that. So I can only imagine I already know what I'm capable of doing, but I can only imagine how a face would be deteriorated of me coming full uh, full um, force from a, a high position thrusting downward, ah, you know what I mean? And uh, it can get pretty scary, you know? So, uh, you know, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm in, I'm in the business of what I'm in and, uh, and um, I'm enjoying it and I love what I do. And, uh, you know, so at this, at this point, it's just only uh, 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 imagination things right now, but it'll be wicked, wouldn't it? Yeah, oh my God! I couldn't even imagine, champ. That would be uh, that would be uh, fight fight fans fantasy land if that ever happened. That'd be uh, that'd be <laughs> that that would be insane. Now, when you met uh, Kyle Lowry and Bam, you were like, "Hey, Bam, you want to be my sparring partner?" He wanted no part of you. I can understand. Uh, but how like when when how hard does it got to be, champ? Because the, the rounds that it says you're putting in on Twitter, all the work you're putting in. How is hard is it to find sparring partners for you? I imagine uh, being as intimidating a puncher you are, do you have to hold back? Do you have to convince people? How hard is it to get people that want to work with you because of what a dynamic puncher you are? Yeah, um, for my, I, I can only give you my point of view of things because I don't, I don't, I don't reach out and um, get the sparring partners. My trainer does, but you know, I do hear uh, different stories and stuff like that. Sometimes he tell me things, and sometimes he don't. You know, um, I know we didn't had a lot of uh, rejections of people and stuff like that because I hit hard. Not only I hit hard in the fight, but I hit hard with 18, 20 ounce gloves on with your head gear on. You know, it don't, it don't, it don't, <laughs> it don't take the, it don't take the fact away that I got God given power, man. You'll still get laid out on the ground. You know, you may end up with a little concussion or whatever or something like that, but that's about it. You know what I'm saying? That I well, no, nah, let me stop lying. You can end up with broke, broken things and and a lot of other sorts of things happening. You know, so uh, with that being said, you know we get a lot of rejection sometimes, and sometimes guys reject it because we're in the same division, 
and they don't want to be a sparring partner because they feel like they may fight me one day. But on the other hand, you do get guys that look at their career and they see where I've been and, and, and they want to go where I've been. So with that being said, you know, they say, uh, you know, uh, iron sharpens iron and they want to come in and get some great work. And then you do have guys that come and get this great work. And everybody that comes, though, uh, they hear one thing, but they leave with something else in mind. You know what I mean? Because people really don't know me unless you know me, unless you're in close with me and you understand me and you see me work. Uh, other than that, if you don't really know me and never been around me or whatever, everything else is just hearsay. I heard, I heard, I heard, oh, okay. You know, and then when they get there, it's totally a different thing, you know, because uh, a lot of people just think I worry, uh, just worry about my power and stuff like that. But, you know, they're, they're sadly mistaken. And a lot of them guys come in with the mindset of, oh, we just got to watch out for the right hand. And when they get busted up with other things as well. But, um, you know, it, 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 most time when I bring my guys in, we always build a family uh, oriented type of uh, feel for each other and a bond. And uh, most of these guys, I got enough group of sparring partners that we reach out to sometimes the same guys and stuff like that because they give me great work. They know me, and I ain't going to have no complaints or, or, or unwillingness of uh, um, participation because we have had guys that would – maybe the next day they don't want no more, but they don't know how to come out and say, hey, just send me home. So they try to do things to make themselves go home, like hide or peep their heads out the door to see how many rounds is left or different things like that. I mean, some real shit go on. <laughs> that's, that's wild. But uh, may God bless them all. Yeah, man. It's, it's tough. Boxing is tough. It's a, the business is tough. You know, you got to understand and put your wrap your head around that. I'm risking my life no matter what, each and every time I step across those rings. And you're risking it even more when you don't have headgear on. This is a business. It's the closest to gladiators back in the Roman day you're going to get in these modern days. It's the closest. And uh, there have been no other uh, business besides boxing that taking lives. You know what I mean? All these other sports and stuff, which I don't consider boxing a sport. It's a business. Sport is something like a masking agent when it comes to me, when it comes to this. But you ain't seeing nobody uh, uh, getting their lives getting took. It. Boxing is the only business that most more lives have been taken than anything around, especially in combat sports. So it's people have to uh, re readjust their minds and think about what they' about to come to see and what it what's the real meaning of what we do. You know what I'm saying? And and keep in mind, we love what we do. We understand the risk factors. And everything that come with it. But at the end of the day, we love what we do. Talking to the great Deontay Wilder. You guys can catch him October 15th on pay-per-view against Robert Hellenius as he is back in the ring for the first time since last October. Uh, Chant, what do you think of Robert as an opponent? What do you think of this challenge ahead of you? Uh, man, Robert is a, 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 a great guy. He's even more wonderful, wonderful man, you know, father. You know, uh, he served his country, you know, in the military. And one thing about Robert, he's a go-getter. He's a, he's a warrior. He has a warrior heart and mentality. And that's something that uh, that brings us together. We have something in common. Because everyone knows with Deontay Wilder, he fight with his heart. You know, he's going to go out. Whether he had to die, he's going to go out. I believe in, I, I die for what I believe in. I tell people that all the time. And I, I lead by example, you know. And uh, uh, Robert, I consider him as the same way. You know, I always tell people the mind doesn't control the body. It's your heart. Because many times your mind will tell you to give up, quit. You're not good enough. You know, they say you can't do this. You can't, They say you can't do that. And you believe that. But with your heart, your heart will tell you you can't quit. You can't give up. I'll die for this. And that's why they all, that's why the saying is you must follow your heart. Because the mind sometimes will make you thought. And you should have, you should have, you, you need to stop thoughting and start thinking. Would be the saying if my father would hit me. So uh, Robert got that same mentality. He fight with his heart. And when you fight, when you get two fighters in there fighting with their heart, oh my goodness, it's Fourth of July, all twelve months. You know what I mean? No matter how many, you know, no matter what time we get in month, uh, January through, through December, 
it's gonna be it's gonna be fireworks. It's gonna be like July, all all those months. You know what I mean? And uh, that's why I'm looking forward to this fight, and I'm training so hard um, because I respect him, and uh, I'm not I'm not taking this fight lightly. Uh, it, 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 it seems like an impossible fight, uh, fight that wouldn't be fun champ for sure. Before we get you out of a couple more, before we get you out of here, big Alabama guy Tua Tunga Valoa down here in Miami, big season ahead for the Miami Dolphins. You got any message for Tua? your, uh, uh, one of your guys there from Alabama. He's got a big one ahead. A lot of doubters Tua's is facing. You think Tua's is going to, uh, turn it around and have a monster year. Hey man, Tua know, Tua, Tua, Tua know where his helps come from. He know that he know a man that make the impossible possible. And that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, you know, with that being said, you know, uh, I just wish them nothing but the best. Good luck on everything. And just go do what you do. Follow your heart. As I always would say, follow your heart. Go out there. If you train hard enough to uh, complete the mission, get the task done, hey, you're going to be, you're going to go out there that, 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 that night of the, of, of, the, of the game. I'm always speaking as, 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 as into fights. I almost say the night of the fight, but it's a fight as well, too. So, when he go out there, he'll know exactly what to do when he places his feet on the solid ground with the field. And um and, and, and just feel the environment. Feel the the energy. Make sure your chakras are right and go out there and have a great time. That's what it's all about when we're doing the things that we love, having a great time while competing and getting and obtaining the B I C T O R Y. Last one, champ. Uh just could you compare what getting a statue in your hometown is like as compared to winning the world championship? That had to be an unbelievable feeling. Uh-huh. Oh my God! Don't make me cry all over again, would you? It was amazing feeling. You know what I mean? Every time I think about it, I'm still to this day, to this day, I'm still in shock. You know what I'm saying? I'm still overwhelmed. I'm still like very emotional about it because, like all my, I don't have to worry about anything anymore. I feel accomplished. I, I feel complete. You know, all my accomplishment has been set in stone within the statue. So no matter what, all my supporters and lovers or all my non-supporters and haters, no matter what, all that talk can die off about Deontay Wilder. But at the end of the day, when it all dies out, you're going to have that statue standing strong and tall and, and surviving unless it's a, a, a world disaster or, or, or something come and knock it down or God just get it, get away from that. But other than that, it's there forever. Even when my kids grow you know what I mean? They got that old statue of their fathers out there and his accomplishments in and outside of the ring. So with that being said, man, I'm blessed because there's a lot of people still try to stay relevant within their craft. They still try to stay relevant with the people, you know what I mean? Because they don't want to be forgotten. But my my city state, the heart of Dixie, out of all places, gave this black man that sits his statue at the Black Warrior River an uh, 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 opportunity to have a statue that motivates and inspires people all over the world. And it means so much to me, man. Oh, my goodness. That's way better than getting any kind of championship at any kind of, any kind of level at any given day. You know what I mean? They could have gave, they could have, they could have gave me a, 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 a I could have won a, 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 a title and got a hundred thousand dollars for it or a million. It would have never, it would never, uh, uh, signifies uh, uh, the statue. You know, that's forever. All that other stuff, it can go. You feel me? It can go. And, and when it goes, it don't have no sentimental value. It don't have no value. It may have sentimental because you work hard to get it, but it don't have no real true value after it's over and, you, you, and you're not here no more. But that statue, it lives on forever and ever and ever. Amen. So with that being said, man, I, ah, man, it changed my life uh, uh, again. You know, my, my life has been changed maybe four times throughout my life. And um, again, it has been changed. So uh, I'm blessed, bro. I'm blessed and highly favored. And I don't take it for granted. Go uh, go watch Deontay Wilder coming up October 15th on pay-per-view against Robert Lynch. You gave me the goosies, man. That was something right there. That was, <laughs> that was, uh, that was awesome. He's always, always worth the price of pay-per-view. He is amazing. Always a showman. And uh, and, uh, and a hell of a hell of a fighter. Thank you so much for the time, Deontay. Really appreciate it. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you so much for the time. Um, and I wish you nothing but the best, man. And uh, may God bless you. You too. Thank you.